So I welcome you to my presentation on AI and drug discovery. Uh, my name is Robin and I'm currently studying health sciences and technology in the fourth semester. So since I find myself very interested in the general use of AI in different parts and also um, the discovery of drug, um, and as soon as I saw some articles about the use of AI in drug discovery processes, I chose uh, this topic uh, for my today's presentation. Um, but first of all, I want to introduce you to the, to the path of a new drug from its research phase to the market launch. So bringing new drugs to the market is very, um, is, it, it is a matter of time and money. And on this figure, uh, we see the time um, scale and also the different parts a uh, drug has to pass pass uh, from its discovery phase to the market launch. So the one on the left um, is all the preclinical phase and it's also called the discovery phase. I want to focus on um, some sources uh, talk from five to 6.5 years um, and it's followed by the clinical trials um, which are around seven years and then it's going to the FDA review and from there uh, it can be uh, ready for the market. And as I already mentioned, these numbers vary greatly because different sources say different things and it also depends on the, uh, the kind of drug and whatever. So this is, uh, we have seen that it's very time consuming and this figure shows us that it's uh, also very uh, money consuming. Um, the numbers, um, I want to focus on are the costs here just per launch. Um, so it's to say this is the cost per approved drug. And on light brown, we see the numbers for the drug discovery phase in general, and the blue parts are for the rest, like this to say the clinical trials and the submission to launch. So the total cost of drug discovery phase is around $824 million, um, which is 46.3% uh, of the total cost. And the total cost is um, $1.8 billion, but um, some sources even speak about $2.8 billion. But um, to summarize, um, it is really, really expensive to launch a new drug because the hit rate of finding a new drug and bringing it to market launch is only 0 to 0.01%. So, um, one out of 10,000 drugs um, approximately is, um, can make it from discovery phase to the market launch. So we can see that the big pharmas are decreasing their investments in their research and development. Um, and instead of um, investing in their own research, uh, they are buying up startup, startups that have um, almost market ready uh, drugs. And we can see also this number that 81% of the new approved drugs um, are usually or initially from third parties. Um, this is a problem um, not only for farmers, but also for us of the public domain, because a lot of startups are usually co-financed by public funds from university maybe, or such um, here at the ETA also and they take the risk of uh, making uh, or discovering new drugs um, and they have to pay it and in the end forum is just taking it over as soon as it's uh, almost market ready. But nonetheless, uh, also the way of discovering new drugs has to change for the big pharma players. Um, and now I want to uh, shortly give an a uh, little insight in how AI is used in this discovery process. Um, so currently there are several companies that offer AI solutions, but um, usually in such um, or only in specific steps. So generally at the moment, it's uh, always a human machine collaboration. Um, yeah. And Generally, we can speak about three or four scenarios of how drugs are discovered. Um, on the right, we see this graphic with uh, key and luck. Uh, so first uh, scenario is um, 
gaining more insights into a disease, which is in this case the lock here. So you study this lock and then find the proper key to, to um, solve this lock. And this information about new diseases or um, new information about existing diseases, uh, they are usually published in uh, papers and journals. And to be up to date, people have to read a lot of these papers. And as you can imagine, AI has much more capacity um, of being up to date with the newest publications and it can also correlate or assimilate and connect as existing data and therefore could help to discover some patterns um, in these huge data pools where only a few of uh, our humans could keep up. Um, the, test, uh, the second one and the third one are quite similar. Uh, it's just testing molecular compounds or in the as in the third point, um, reproposing existing drugs. Um, reproposing existing drugs as one big advantage as these um, drugs often already passed, uh, passed a series of tests and therefore have a less risk of unexpected toxicity or side effects. And testing molecular compounds is just um, on, uh, on med medical data of, on genes or proteins, you make um, um, new molecular compounds out of this huge data pool of existing molecular compounds and just try and error. And also here, uh, AI can scan millions a day where humans could uh, only do much less. And the last point is uh, like the, for me, the most important point where uh, it's called manipulating genetic material. Um, um, AI can uh, enable the analysis of huge genome data sets, um, can analy analyze, analyze it and give uh, maybe the, give out the exact genetic uh, cause of a genetic disease uh, or also there is um, quite a lot of hope in discovering uh, why some side effects occur uh, on a few patients and, and on a few not. And this field of medicine is called personalized medicine and is becoming more and more important in the future. And with the efficient and simple analysis of genomes, more and more secrets behind the DNA, the code of life, can be discovered and predicted by AI. So now I want to talk about the opportunities and also the challenges and the concerns uh, that should be made by integrating AI in the drug discovery process. So as I already said now, um, it is a man-machine, uh, human-machine collaboration, um, and it can speed up the process of drug discovery pretty, uh, pretty much. So this is a quite obvious advantage as the speeding up the discovery process can save a lot of money and also time. And this is not only good for the big farmers, it's also good for us, the patients. Um, if we have a therapy earlier on the market, we can treat earlier diseases and therefore so, uh, save more lives. And if, it's, um, if the discovery costs are lower, we can also assume that in the end, the costs of a new therapy are much less. Um, as I said, AI can also um, predict the specificity of a drug better than humans can, or in the future um, probably can, and also reduce the toxicity. This is the obvious advantage that uh, we have less side effects in the end. Also with the um, huge analysis of genome data sets, we can uh, um, find the, the cause of a rare genetic disease and therefore care it, uh, cure it. So these are the opportunities. And now the challenges are, uh, one point I want to highlight is the intellectual property as um, usually um, knowledge produced by machines is uh, belongs to the public domain. But as I already mentioned, this is a human uh, machine collaboration and therefore this is not that clear. And uh, so drugs discovered by AI, should they have, should the farmers have a right to patent it or not, um, and there are 
some pros and contras I want to shortly speak about because if the farmers can have um, this um, security of a patent, um, this makes the business um, lucrative because I uh, already said that these investments in discovery phase are uh, cost a lot of money. They uh, need this security of a patent because then they can sell their medications or their therapies or drugs um, as a, with a monopoly. And this brings them the security that they can make a lot of money out of it and in the end make the discovery process even lucrative. But um, if we say drugs are not being protected by the patent law um, because they have AI involved in it, this means that uh, maybe these formats don't want to integrate AI or don't want to spend uh, money on discovery processes because they then can just copy other uh, companies that make this uh, discovery phase through. And this maybe is then a free market where um, demand, uh, offer, demand and offer um, regulates the price. And this means um, drugs which are consumed very often are therefore very cheap. But um, at this, the big problem is that uh, not a lot of money is spent in discovering new drugs, especially for very rare diseases. As only a, a little amount of people um, want these uh, drugs and therefore um, you can't sell it as much. So the second point is uh, jobs. We have to always speak about uh, the jobs if we integrate artificial intelligence in any kind of business because um, it will outpower out it will outpower us humans and therefore um, these pharma companies will um, um, some people working in this discovery process will lose their jobs um, because they're not efficient enough anymore and because you want to make as much as money as possible um, you you just uh, take AI instead of humans and the third part is responsibility. Um, this is um, now not uh, too big of a problem, but if you think a little bit further when AI really takes over all of this process um, and make or develop a new drug by itself, which make it uh, market ready, which pass the clinical trials, of course, and then maybe cause a huge harm on people taking these drugs because there was um, some toxicity in maybe let's say pregnant women, which was not known before, and therefore cause a big harm. Who is taking the responsibility for it? Is it the people um, which are sold the AI or is it the pharma giants who use the AI? Um, this is a question that should be uh, asked in advance. And of course, data. Um, as data is the main source um, for AI, and with the odd ones in, um, in personalized medicine, um, the genomes are getting even more, more important for, uh, for this data for AI. And there are already currently some studies going on as in, or has already been made in the UK with 10,000 people. Um, they scanned their genomes looking for some patterns for rare diseases or stuff like this. And we can, um, assume that this is going on in the future with that as well, that um, a lot of genomes are sequenced and then fed to the AI, which can um, see patterns in that. Um, this leads me also to the uh, challenges and concerns I have, uh, not about the now, but more about the future. Um, as I already uh, said, this approach in personalized medicine, which is going on and the uh, Sequencing of genomes is um, always getting cheaper. Uh, we can, uh, we know that um, a lot of more of these um, secrets behind the DNA are getting discovered by AI. And we have to ask ourselves, how far do we want to go? Uh, how far, uh, how much do we want to know about the secrets behind the code of life? And should we even have the right to know about it? Who should keep the rights about this information? Um, is it the big farmers alone? Um, should I have the rights? 
do I really want to know maybe that I have a 60% bigger risk of dying on um, prostate cancer or um, that maybe an unborn baby is being born with a with a with a genetic disease is it uh, worth living um, should my doctor even have these data and give me just uh, without uh, me telling what i have drugs and say you should take it um, and what about the health insurances because in the end they have to pay for the sick people and maybe they have them different prices for different people because their genome is more healthy than others and these are um, just questions that are a bit more distant from my uh, actual topic but uh, in my opinion should still be included um, when we talk about the use of artificial intelligence in medicine as uh, this is not too far away from it uh, from now um, and that's it for my presentation um, I want to thank you for your attention and open the discussion round.